All right, traders, YouTubers, I am back again with another video. Today is the start of our very first um, Ichimoku series. This series is going to be called um, Understanding Ichimoku. Okay, so I want to break this whole system down to you. And what I'm going to do is start today with the basics. So bear with me as we get through the basics. It'll get more exciting and you'll learn more things as we move forward. But today we want to take the basics, make sure you know them. So always learning the beginning stuff is always going to be boring. But then once we get to the good things like the theories, we have three theories that we're going to be focused on with Ichimoku. So you're going to be working at looking at the time analysis, wave analysis, and observation theory. So we want to know those theories and we're going to add those into our system. So I'll be teaching you all that. So what you got to do is you got to stay tuned. You got to watch your email. And if you're not a member, then what you have to do is subscribe to this YouTube channel and then hit the notifications so you can know when I put up the next video because you're not going to want to miss this series guys you are not going to want to miss this because i'm going to give you everything i know about ichimoku in this series so stay tuned we're going to get started right now with the five parts the five lines All right, family, before we get started, I just want to take a chance to give you some words of encouragement because now more than ever, it seems like things are falling apart. It's getting harder and harder. Many people feeling depressed. Many people suffering going through this pandemic, going through this racial issues that we're dealing with in this country. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of words of encouragement and with that, I'm going to John 16, 33. I have said these things to you, that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay? So my brother and my sister, I tell you that even in difficult times, in times of pandemic and civil disobedience, we still can rest on the fact that our God is sovereign. Our God is in control. Even though it seems like the world is out of control, just know that God is sitting on the throne. We serve a God who is great and highly lifted. So even during these difficult times, I want you to be encouraged. And may God bless you and your family. All right, traders, let's take a look at Ichimoku. This is the first video in a series of um, videos that I'm going to be showing or introducing you to Ichimoku. It's called Understanding Ichimoku Kinko Hayo. All right, so I want to start off basically with this video, which is going to be your five lines that you need to understand. I don't want to get to a PowerPoint presentation all the time per se, but this is going to be very critical that you understand this first section very well. All right. Um, so it is going to be PowerPoints, but we'll also be looking at charts and I'll also be showing you things through the charts and also be showing you things, how to make trades on the chart. All right. So please bear with me as we deal with the um, PowerPoints. I know it's boring as I read a PowerPoint to you, but it's very vital. Understand what I'm saying, because later on you're going to, you don't want to have to keep going back, but that'll be good for you, but you don't want to have to keep going back to understand what we're talking about. You want to be able to latch on and keep moving forward. So let's start this series right now. Ichimoku is a pure, purely domestic technical analysis system created by Mr. Gochi Hosada, also known as Ichimoku Sanjin. Mr. Hosada worked as a general manager for sales for the Mayakano newspaper. In 1936, he released Ichimoku under the name Ichimoku Sanjin. In 1969, Ichimoku Sanjin wrote a book consisting of seven volumes. 
It is said that it is almost impossible to understand everything in theory. Furthermore, the um, original books and lectures are all in Japanese, making it even harder for traders to learn. In Japan, it is supported by overseas fund managers, and it is one of the most popular technical indicators among individual investors. The Ichimoku equilibrium is composed of three theories, time theory, wave theory, and value observation theory, using five lines, Tenkinsen, Kijinsen, Senko span, A and B, and Chiku span. And yes, we're going to learn all those theories. You'll know them once we get done with this series. All right. Ichimoku is a powerful three-dimensional charting system that shifts the time axis to the future and the past. Ichimoku comprehensively incorporates wave, time, and level analysis and is a visual representation of the balance or the equilibrium of the market price. This is a very profound technical analysis that focuses on time analysis and extends to wave analysis. Ichimoku translates to one glance. Kinkle translates to equilibrium and Hyo means graph or chart. All right. The indicator is used to display support and resistance levels, momentum and trend direction, all at one glance. It helps the trader determine the most suitable time to enter and exit the market. That is your Ichimoku Kinko Hayu system. When you first look at this, it looks very complicated. Traders don't even put the time in to really learn it and study it. But once you do, you will see how valuable it is to you. This is how I've done. At first, I never really wanted to learn Ichimoku because it looked complicated. Then when I started to, it seemed complicated. But then there was something about it that kept me to it. And I just wanted to learn it more. And once I put the time into it, it became easier than I thought. So the five lines are your Tenkinsen, also known as your, as, also known as your conversion line. It's going to be the green line that you see on my chart. It's equal to nine day high plus the nine day low divided by two, and that's your midpoint, which would be your Tenkinsen level. Kijinsen, also known as the reference line, is almost the same as Kijinsen, I mean, um, Tenkinsen, but Kijinsen is just, instead of nine days, it's 26 days. So it's the highest high for the past 26 days and the lowest low for the past 26 days. Notice that your highest high and highest low for the past nine days was your Tenkinsen. But Kijinsen is your highest high and your lowest low for the past 26 days. All right. Divided by two. And that would be your midpoint. That would be where Kijinsen lies. Your Chico span or your lagging span is the closing price of the current day moved back 26 days or candles, whatever. But it's on the exact same level as where price is currently, but just moved back 26 periods. Cinco span A is your leading span A. It's going to be the gray line on my chart. It's known as the conversion line plus reference line divided by two advance 26 days into the future. This is where we get our future. Now, when we talk about this, it's not where price will be in the future. It's where your support and resistance levels will be in the future. Single span B, your leading span B, which will be the blue line, is the 52 day high plus 52 day low divided by two advance 26 days into the future. Those two lines, span A and span B together, form the shaded area, which would be your Kumo cloud. You're going to learn that um, also Mr. Hosada never, ever called the Kumo the Kumo, the cloud the cloud. He never called it that. He called it basically resistance um, zone, resistance band or whatever. He didn't call it um, your, key, your Kumo. He called it the resistance zone. So here's your Tinkinson also known as your conversion line. It's this green line, as you can see. And here you can see it in context with the whole system. So here we have it all by itself. And here we have it with the whole system. You can see the past nine days is the midpoint of, key, of Tinkinson. So the past nine day high, past nine day low, which would be here, past nine day high, and then the midpoint is right here, which would be your Tinkinson at the midpoint of the past nine days. Notice how price pulls back to the Tinkinson 
nine day equilibrium point at the red arrow. So look where price continually pulls back to that nine day equilibrium point. That's very vital for you to understand and know because you can take trades at these levels. This is going to be pretty much just like um, any moving average that you use to take a trade off of. The Tinkinson has the fastest response to price among the five Ichimoku lines and it is the basis of analysis. As the name suggests, the conversion line represents the process of changing within the market. This is where the market shows its initial turning point by crossing Tinkinson. That starts the whole downtrend or uptrend or, or even range level first with Tinkinson. All right. Tinkinson displays short term price movements and portrays market trends. Tinkinson makes it easier to grasp the current state of the market. The turning point of the market is represented by the average of the highest price for the past nine days and the lowest price for the last nine days. When these levels are violated, it shows this is where we can see the development of a trend and the increase of short term momentum. Since the number of periods calculates is smaller than that of the Kijinsen, which is your reference line, then your Tinkinson suggests a short term price movement. Tinkinson also represents short term support and resistance. If the price is above Tinkinson, then Tinkinson represents short term support. But if the price falls below, Tinkinson then represents short term resistance. Therefore, at times you will see price bounce off Tinkinson. So let's look at Tinkinson in context. All right, guys, so we get an opportunity to get away from those PowerPoints and look at the charts, the live charts, so you could get some kind of um, idea how things work and break up that monopoly a little bit. All right, so here we go. We're going to look at, basically, we're going to start off looking at this Tinkinson, okay? So this is what we want to be aware of and look at at this point and understand right now. So basically, when you look at this, I'm going to take it and show you just um, the Tinkinson by itself. So let me show you that right now so there's Tinkinson all by itself that's it by itself it pretty much looks like a moving average so it's pretty much like a nine period okay and you can see how the market follows it very well so you could see how you get bounces off of that level and you can see the angulation so we really want to get in trades we don't want to see this flat like this so this shows you the short-term momentum when you see it angling to the downside like that you know this is the market is bearish at the short term and then you could see where it rolled back up you could see that's pretty much bullish at the short term and when you look at this as a whole you're going to see the the more of a the, it follows the pullback more than the your tank your kijinsen would so more pullback moves this would follow your pullback more than kijinsen your kijinsen level would or your span a or span b would so this helps you to see you know when you're looking at this it's going to be more like the pullback of the market but then once it it's and it's also going to show the beginning of the trend so if that pullback turns into a trend this is the first thing that's going to start to roll to the upside all right so you want to trade the angle you don't want to be trading long while Tinkinson's aiming to the downside. And you don't want to be trading to the downside while Tinkinson is aiming to the upside. Those are just basic things that you really need to know and understand. And don't go against those things. Now, when you trade with this, the next thing you want to look at is and hold the, the whole thing in context. You want to see bouncing off of this level, just like you would a moving average. And you would trade that bounce or the move below the moving average. All right. Um, and you could see we're flat here. So you got a flat market here and you could see how Tinkinson pretty much wasn't really going anywhere until you broke here. You could see that downward move. Then it flattened it out again. Then it went to the downside. So this is short term momentum showing you the short term direction, short term bias, short term momentum, short term support and resistance. So let's put this back together um, with everything and look at it in context. OK, so here's your whole system together. So like I was telling you, this is going to show you the move first. OK, so you could see the move to the downside. Then you see where Tinkinson aimed to the upside. Kijinsen was still aiming to the downside. Spent um, A and B were still aiming to the downside. But the short term Tinkinson was going to the upside. And therefore, sometimes that's just a correction. None of the other 
lines will aim to the upside and then it'll come back to the downside. But you had a crossover here. So this is what you call your TK crossover, where this Tinkinson crossed over your Kijinson right there. All right, that's a bullish crossover. All right, and then this is a like a bearish crossover. We, we just crossed back over. Not really, you can't see it there. I'll show you a better example. So this is your bearish crossover, one right here. Um, pretty much another bullish crossover and then a bearish crossover. All right. So everything was aiming to the downside. You know, the trend probably isn't changing much because everything was aiming to the downside except Tinkinson. So this was just a correction here. And then you could see where it crossed back over again. Now you should know that that's a good move to get into the downside. All right. And see, Ichimoku doesn't really tell you exactly where to get into the market. It gives you the strength of the market, the bias of the market, the support and resistance levels of the market. So that's what you're going to get with that. All right. So that's what Tinkinson and you could see, um, like I showed you before, I like to follow this thing. I want to show you a good area where you could really tell. So those are more bounces off of Kijinson, but you also the market follows this Tinkinson very well. And those are where you want to bounce off of those levels. Um, can't really see it real good here, but as the market moves, it just follows this level. You could see pretty much. And another thing is really, so when you go back and look at Tinkinson, the trend, the, um, short term bias will change bearish right here. That's just a correction short term bias because you broke the short term indication, which is your Tinkinson medium term bias would change if you broke your Kijinson right here. So you broke Tinkinson, but you weren't able to break Kijinson and then you didn't break any of your spans. OK, so that's the thing with Tinkinson. Pretty basic, pretty simple. But you need to know these as we move forward and we start talking about um, the theories, your three theories. All right. So um, that's Tinkinson in a nutshell. Let me take you back to the boring PowerPoints and then we'll look at Kijinson after that. Kijinson, our reference line. It is this blue line. So basically you could see the blue line here by itself. This is your Kijinson. But with the whole system in context, this is Kijinson working in joint with Tinkinson. Kijinson means base or standard in Japanese. Kijinson is the mid price or equilibrium point, the equilibrium balance of the past 26 days. So it's the balance of the past 26 days, which is the midpoint, the equilibrium point right here. All right. So this market farther away from this midpoint. All right. That represents um, disequilibrium. This represents disequilibrium as it moves away. But as it moves closer, it's equilibrium. Notice how price pulls back to the Kijinson 26 day equilibrium point at these red arrows. Boom, boom, boom. It's very important for you to understand that, too, because basically, again, this is just like a trend line. I mean, I'm, I'm um, moving average and Ichimoku. This would be your trend line. All right, because this is basically going to be the market overall follows that. And anything that violates Kijinsen is going to start a new supposedly start a new trend. All right. So passing through Tinkinson usually would be a correction. Passing through Kijinsen might be the start of a new trend. OK. The Kijinsen, also known as the reference line or baseline, is a line that draws the average or midpoint of the highest high and the lowest low of the past 26 days. The moving average is the average of the closing prices. But since Kijinsen is the average of the highest high and the lowest low, of the uh, previous 26 periods, the slope of Kijinsen will remain flat unless the previous high or low of the past 26 periods is updated or changes. That's very important to know and understand. And that's why support, you can use this level as a strong level of support all right, or resistance. If Kijinsen is sideways, it means that the high and low prices have not changed for the past 26 days and the market is judged to be ranging. If Kijinsen is angled upwards, then the current exchange rate is updating the high price for the past 26 days. So the market has a clear uptrend at that point. 
Conversely, if Kijin Sen is angled downward, the current exchange rate is updating the low price for the past 26 days, so the market price is a clear downtrend. A moving average forms a curved line, whereas Kijin Sen becomes flat. This flattening of Kijin Sen also represents strong support and resistance levels. Kijin Sen is important because it shows the bias of the market. If Kijin Sen is angling upwards and prices above Kijin Sen, this represents a bullish bias. In addition, if Kijin Sen is angling downwards and prices below Kijin Sen, then the market is bi a bearish bias, and you would be best served to short the market at that point. Also, if Kijin Sen is parallel, it is a range, and when the candlestick is above or below Kijin Sen, it is judged as a so-called cross-border market that has moved up and down across the equilibrium points of the past 26 periods. In this respect, Kijin Sen is seen as a trend line, as I stated earlier. All right, It is the reference point when looking at the market price. Kijin Sen represents medium-term market equilibrium. When price is at or near Kijin Sen, then the market is in equilibrium. The farther away price moves from Kijin Sen, this represents disequilibrium. A market that is in equilibrium has an equal amount of buyers and sellers. But as there is an increase in buyers or sellers, this would cause the market to move farther away from Kijinson. All right, and at that point, that's when you want to be on that boat also. Using this concept, you would not want to make a trade decision when the market is too far away from Kijinson, as this would be indi indicate that the market is overextended and there could be a correction looming. So your best time to trade is when the market is bouncing. That's why I say bouncing on Kijinson. So you want to get a trade at Kijinsen. The farther away price moves from Kijinsen, the more likely there is to be a correction. Kijinsen and Tinkinson are used as a set. You don't see it only with Kijinsen, and conversely, you don't see it only with Tinkinson. You look at both of them together. This is the basis of the basics, all right? So when Tinkinson breaks above Kijinsen, this is known as a bullish TK cross or golden cross and represents a buy signal. Conversely, when Tinkinson breaks below Kijinsen, this is known as a bearish TK cross or a death cross and represents a sell signal. Now, remember that I told you these signals did not originate from Ichimoku Sanjin. All right. Here we see Tinkinson cross Kijinsen from below to above. This represents the start of the immediate bullish trend right here cross the right above then your trend starts to become bullish and then market eventually breaks through the cloud for a kumo breakout and price moves higher right so here was your crossover your crossover and then price moves higher when Tinkson crosses below Keegan's from above as shown this represents the start of the immediate bearish trend and what happens price drops to the downside don't expect this to be golden guys but be aware so let's look at Kijinsen in context all right guys so here's Kijinsen. basically this blue line is your Kijinsen level and that's going to be the same thing as Tinkinson but it's just instead of nine periods this is 26 periods so now you're going to see this reacting a little bit slower that's why the um the term is medium midterm all right so it's going to be longer term than um tinkinson but less than your spans okay so let's let's look at this in context by itself actually let's look at it by itself so looking at this kijinson you could see how it follows the market very well follows it really nice okay and then you could see how the market pulls back to the Tinkinson level to your Kijinson level this is boom and then boom boom and then kind of you could get good trades off of that because this is going to be your medium term equilibrium point just like Tinkinson would be your short term equilibrium overall the bigger bias is with the tink with your Kijinson because that's going to be the market's not going to travel too far away from Kijinson and when it does it's going to pull back look throughout this whole time we never really got that far away from Kijinson and when we did we pulled back okay so you could see the market does not get that far away so one thing I like to let people know is if you're getting too far away from Kijinsen, 
you shouldn't probably trade the direction of that market until you get till the market corrects itself and gets closer to equilibrium because that market is out of equilibrium and it's not going to continue to stay out of equilibrium. And if you jump in a market that's out of equilibrium, you're going to probably have some issues. The best time to get into the market is when the market is in equilibrium, because that's when it's going to be your biggest moves come off of markets that are in equilibrium. All right. So like here you were in equilibrium because you're right at the equilibrium point, but then your big move came. All right. Then you crossed over the equilibrium point and then you're sitting on equilibrium and the market moves higher. And this is why we can use this as a good level. Now, this was a you would have definitely probably been looking to go short here. You didn't make much profit, but then eventually the market crossed over. Now, this is why I don't just pay attention to indicators. I like to know my support and resistance levels based off of the market, knowing the market itself. Because if I just listen to this indicator, when I see the market break above this level, then I'm thinking, oh, well, we're bullish. But you can't just pay attention to the market. I mean, to um, the indicator, you need to pay more, uh, more attention to the market structure, basically. And um, my course with the fractals will help you to understand the market structure because it'll help you to understand when the market is turned to bullish and when it has turned to bearish, when it's flat, and when you should be trading, what direction and so forth. But here you can see the market is flat. All right. And then um, it looks like it broke above Kijinsen, so we would have probably been looking for it long, but then it broke right back below. All right. But if you had understood the market here, you probably be wanting to got caught in this one here. But then the market breaks below here and then the market is going really well. All right. So this is your short term. I mean, your medium term, sorry, resistance, support and resistance, your medium term bias, your medium term equilibrium point. And a lot of times also, once that correction starts for your Tinkinson level, when you see that Tinkinson correction change and then you see the change with Kijinsen, that's a good trade. All right. But I'm going to show you also when you look at them both together, how to see, know that the momentum is super strong for you. So let's put, um, put them back together. Let's put everything back here in context. All right. So here we go looking at everything together. So here you could see the blue line is what we're paying attention to. Now, here's how you could tell that a market is with a str with a strong move. All right. So normally when a good move, like you could see the angulation of Tinkinson and Kijinsen both aiming to the upside. That's strong for um, just to know that that market is moving that direction and you probably shouldn't trade against that. You probably do want to know the structure and know where the change may occur for the the um, correction to end. But most of the time you're going to look for that correction to end inside your zone. So I call this my TK zone, my Tinkinson Kijinsen between that is the zone. All right. And so in between that zone is where I look for the market to correct itself. So it'll correct itself inside that zone and then go come back to the zone and then go. All right. Sometimes it doesn't come into the zone. It just comes to Tinkinson and sometimes it comes to the bottom of the zone. So this is your support and resistance zone. All right. So it's going to be when the market is above it. This is the first level of support and second level of support. When the market is below it, it'll be your first level of resistance. And then your second level of resistance, when the market goes into that zone right here, you're waiting for it to come back out. Boom. Then you got your trade. See, so a very good trade is when you see this. All right. So that you want to see the annulation both together. All right. But the strongest moves are like the real strong move is when they're real tight together like this. When you see Tinkinson and Kijinsen aiming down together like this, this first candle signified it. So let me take you back to this point. All right. So you probably couldn't tell right here. Then the market got moving. You didn't get your crossover yet, but then there you go. Look at how they're aiming together. Now, from this point on, you definitely know that these are this is a strong moving market. And you can see it gives you a little bit more profit and then it gives keeps giving you profit. And then it kind of slows down. And you can see what happens with the angulation. That angle stopped a little bit. It's still angling to the downside, but not as much. OK. So that's very important to know, because when you see that, especially like like you could see it right here, see how they're very tight together and aiming to the downside. You know, you got a good trade to the to the downside at that point. And a good thing is like if you get a let me see if I can find one and show you. Well, this is a Kumo breakout right here. 
when you get a Kumo breakout with angulation like this, all right, so let's go backwards so you could see exactly what I'm talking about. Now this breakout, see if we're there. We're not there yet. That wasn't the point, so it's not really showing you that there. But what I want to show you is like when you see this angulation with a breakout, you definitely want to take that trade, that Kumo breakout. All right. And we'll talk more about the trades and Kumo breakouts and stuff like that later. But I just want you to understand this angulation. You want to take that trade. You want to be getting into the market when you see that. All right. You could see here there was a crossover and then it aimed to the upside. Now, again, the market right here, you could see where everything was flat. But then it made a move to the upside, slight move to the upside, and the market went, went to the upside a little bit. Um, those are the things that you want to be aware of. See that angulation there? And they're tight together. Now, no, another thing to be aware of is you don't want to see them getting too far apart. Think of these two as lovers. They don't want to be away from each other. They just want to be up under each other's behind all day long. You want to be next to me. I want to be next to you and I don't want to go do anything else. Well, when they get too far apart, then they're sad and they get back together. That's a good indication of a couple things. First of all, you shouldn't be taking a trade when you see this distance like this. I call this a C clamp. All right. When it gets really big and we'll talk more about that a little bit. Let me show you exactly what a C clamp is to me. Um, I'd have to look for a really good one, but I'm going to just use this one for instance. All right. So I'm going to try to eliminate some stuff on the chart to show you. So let me eliminate everything and show you. So what you're looking at is this distance here, and I'm going to move this back. And this really isn't a bigger one, but sometimes you'll see them get really big. You'll see this um, Tinkinson get far apart from Kijinson. This will be flat. And then this will be moving farther apart. When you see that, like see how far apart it's getting? You don't want to be getting into a long trade at this point. Because more than likely, you're going to range up here and then drop to get back to equilibrium and then move back to the upside again. And you could see the market drops because it's getting too far away. Now you'll see on charts like where it's really big, like even here it got far apart. You could see the angulation and then the drop to the downside. This stayed flat. Kijinson stayed flat, but Tinkinson was still aiming to the upside and got too far away. And then the market corrected itself and then went back to the trend. That's another sign that you don't want to go long right here. At this point yet, yeah, you want to wait for the correction. Maybe you're going to correct back at this level. So you'll wait to see if you could get a trade off of that level. And you could see the market bounces on that level and gives you an opportunity to get into a, a long trade with price action. All right. So this is a good support and resistance point, And it's a very good um, equilibrium point, a very good trading point. Very good overall. All right. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, but again, remember. Do not go the direction that Tinkinson is taking you if Tinkinson gets too far away from Kijinson. Do not do it. Wait for the correction. All right. Because you're getting farther from equilibrium and these two are getting farther apart. Eventually, they're going to start crying and want to get back together. And what happens? You get caught up in a love fest because they try to get back together while you try to run long with, with Tinkinson. Tinkinson realizes, hey. I'm in love with somebody else. Please leave me alone. I'm going back and they go back and you're stuck with a bad trade. All right. So don't trade when they're too far apart. And you can tell you'll see that angulation. This will be flat and this will be going way farther above. You just got to wait. And eventually this will start angling to the upside. Also, that's what you want when you see that. Now, see, when you get this, you get this pullback. The market gets back to this level, it corrects itself. All right. So it pulls back to this level with this little correction because the trend is bullish because this is also like your like your trend line. Kijinson is like your trend line. You're staying right above that level. All right. Then it comes to your trend line and then your trend line angles to the upside. You want to be trading at that point. All right. 
and you can see it starts to move to the upside now watch make sure you get out of your TK zone also but you can see once that starts angling to the upside then your trade is okay to trade so that's basically your Kijinson in a nutshell very good for you to understand it all right so let's get back to those boring old PowerPoints I know and then we'll look at um, the Kumo cloud in context Cinco span A and B, also known as leading span A and B. So Cinco span A and B, previously here you don't see the filled cloud, but then here you see it filled and it makes the cloud. Here it's not filled, and there's the cloud now. The shaded area between leading span A and leading span B is known as the Kumo cloud. And this area is also a support and resistance zone Ichimoku Sanjin did not call this area the Kumo or the cloud, but instead he called it the resistance zone. The only lines shifted into the future are the leading spans A and B. All right. It is possible to check the trend of the market simply by looking at the position of the Kumo and the price. So if price is above the Kumo, it is judged to be bullish. And if it's below, it is judged to be bearish. If price is above the Kumo, then Kumo represents support. If price is below the Kumo, then Kumo represents resistance. To judge the bias of the market, it requires a daily candle breakthrough. The thinner the Kumo, the easier the market can violate the support and resistance of the Kumo. But a thicker Kumo represents strong support and re uh, resistance and is therefore harder for the market to violate. Where the leading span A and B intersect each other, this is called the Kumo twist and there is likely to be a market turning point a trend change or acceleration. When leading span A crosses above leading, leading span B, this represents a bullish sign and shows bullish strength. If leading span A crosses below leading span B, this represents a bearish sign and shows bearish strength. So what exactly does the leading span A represent? If the conversion line represents the short term, equilibrium point nine days and the reference line represents the medium term equilibrium point 26 days then leading span a is the short to medium term equilibrium point shifted 26 days into the future and tries to read how the trend in the short and medium term has changed all right based on ichimoku short term is 17.5 days it represents the market equilibrium point in the short and medium term and the trend in the short and medium term represents leading span A. All right. So when you, whatever way you see leading span A pointing up or down, that represents the sh short to medium term market trend. Okay. Price will always break span A before breaking span B. When price breaks span A, it is seen as the beginning of consolidation. Leading span B represents the current long-term equilibrium point of the past 52 days, shifted 26 days into the future. Leading span B compares the current market level in the long term with price after 52 days and represents how the trend in the long term has changed. So, Cinco span means proceeding in Japanese. Cinco span B is the mid price or equilibrium point of the past 52 days. So here you can see I took the past 52 days from here to here. This is the 52 day high, the 52 day low, and where is your midpoint? 52 days and then shift it into the future. It's right there. All right, where sync up spam B is. Very important concept because that's gonna show you equilibrium points. That's all equal that's all Ichimoku shows you is equilibrium points. All right, support and resistance levels. Sink out span B represents long-term balance in the market. Here you can see price retrace back to the balance point of sink out span B. Even though price dropped, you can have assurance knowing price will follow the direction of span B. In this case, span B is pointing upwards, so price should move higher. All right, so here you can see span B moving upwards, so price should move higher. And you can see price continues to move higher. 
So as long as SPAM B is aiming upward, then you can see price remains in the bullish trend. If price falls below its 52 day equilibrium point, we then have a longer term bearish market. All right. So here's the 52 day, two day equilibrium point and the market fell below that point. Market became pretty bearish. Conversely, if price rises above its 52 day equilibrium point, we then have a bullish market. There was your equilibrium point. The market was bullish. This was your equilibrium point. You could see it flat right there. And there we break higher. Going backwards here, you could see this equilibrium point flat right here. The market broke through. Boom. Okay. Very strong concepts. In an uptrend, sync out span A is above sync out span B. As the trend changes to bear, span A crosses below span B, representing the start of a longer term bearish trend. You could see span A on top. This is span A. And as the trend changes, it drops, boom, and crosses span B. We call that a Kumo twist. This became a bearish twist, a bearish future, a bearish bias. And then the market became bearish. The market was bearish before this happened. All right, it started that bearishness here, as you can see, but then this developed later. In a downtrend, Cinco Span B is above Cinco Span A. As the trend changes to bullish, Span B crosses below Span A, representing the start of a longer term bullish trend. Cinco Span A and B make up and represent the Kumo cloud. Now we can um, understand, or we need to understand, the basic structures of the Kumo and what they mean. So here you can see the gray Kumo outlined by the red lines. The Kumo is angling downward, and this represents a bearish market when we see the Kumo aiming to the downside. You can see that in between these red lines that I drew. And very strong, very bearish here, and the market was just dropping to the downside. When you see this, you really don't want to be trading short, I mean um, long. You want to be trading with the trend sh short, all right? And here you can see the blue Kumo outlined by the red lines. The Kumo is angling upward and this represents a bullish market. You can see between these lines, this Kumo, this blue Kumo is angling to the upside. Why would you be going short? All right. And here you can see the Kumo is flat between the red lines. Also, you can see many Kumo twists. All right. So you went from blue to a gray, flat, then gray to blue. All right, this is a sign of a ranging market. Many traders lose in this market as they continue to trade the market as if it were trending. Fail to understand that it's ranging. Ichimoku is showing you that it's ranging. A thick Kumo represents volatility, as you can see in the chart below. The trend has possibly ended and the market may range or change direction. Let's look at the Kumo in context. All right, guys, so we're looking at your Ichimoku all together, and then I'm going to just show you um, Senko Span A and B. So let's take everything off the chart and look at that. So here you see this is really your Kumo cloud, but the cloud is outlined by Span A and B. So on a bullish trend, when the market is moving to the upside, Span A is on top. All right, and you can see they crossed right here, and Span B will be on the bottom. All right. So B should be on the bottom on a normal trend to the upside. All right. And then you can see how B flattens out. It's a stronger level and it's a longer indication. And you can see how B flattened out here. So when you're looking at a trade, most of the time you want to be trading the direction that span A is leading you. OK, so basically what span A is, um, it's the short to medium term equilibrium point shifted 26 days into the future. All right. And based on Ichimoku, like I told you, the short term is 17.5 days. All right. So this represents the short to medium term equilibrium point span A. Now here span A is on the bottom. Span A will be this blue line. And then you're safe to follow your trade 
the direction of span A. So you could see span A moving to the downside. You're safe there. It's still moving to the downside, even though you get this big correction, but it's still moving to the downside. Now it flattens out. All right. And then the market moves back to the downside. All right. And also, just like Tinkinson and Keenson, this is going to be a bit longer term um, than Tinkinson and Keenson. So this would be like if I'm looking at Tinkinson and Keenson, pretty much you'll see the same thing happening. But on a shorter term, this is going to be even longer term. All right. But you can see now this is span B on the bottom and a downtrend. It's on the top and you can see how it flattens out here. All right. And you can see where it's flat. Those are good support and resistance levels. And sometimes the market doesn't honor the come right back to this point because you'll have to do this to find those levels. You'll extend the line from that point and you could see where it will become a resistance level. And then you would also if you see that flat cloud, you could use those levels as support and resistance. That helps you to draw support and resistance levels. All right. So you could see that flatness and pretty much where I drew this level, you could see where the market was. Now I can adjust and you could see your flat there, but you could see what the market was. Even though I drew the flat level here, you could see where it was resistance there. Support up here and then still back here was resistance even moving forward. So that helps you to draw some support and resistance levels also. OK, so the thing with this, um, I never really look at this separately. I look at this as one thing. And what I look at it is when it's shaded and it's the cloud. And I'm going to tell you a couple of things about this cloud. So let's put the let's put everything back on the chart. OK, so with everything back on the chart, now you could see that cloud. And I be, I basically just pay attention to really the color of the cloud because that lets me know that I had a Kumo twist. Now, the Kumo twist is this when span A and B cross each other. All right. So this will be a bullish twist twist because span A, which is the blue one, crossed above span B, which was flat at this point. All right. So span B is going to be a longer term indication for you. So basically span A is your um, Tinkinson and Keenson. I don't always say conversion and reference. I say Tinkinson and Keenson. Um, it's those two levels divided by two advanced 26 days into the future. All right. So that's what you will get for span A. Span B is going to be um, 52 day high and 52 day low. All right. Divided by two and then moved at 26 days into the future. So this is this spam B is based off of 52 days. So that's going to be your 52 day, your longer term equilibrium point. Now, I don't pay a lot of attention just to like I'll see this flat market when that flat when that flat cloud is back behind this. This is going to be a, a Kumo shadow. That's what they call that flat um, cloud back here because the markets above it. Behind, oh, so this is behind the market. The market's ahead of it. And then you have your sun up here and your rays are aiming down to this point and making this cloud here, making this um, shadow here off of this level. So you could see this would be your shadow. Now, that's per se. But this they call this a Kumo shadow. All right. And it's a good level of support and resistance. All right. So in your trade, you're following this bullish trend. So you could see this market was bearish, but then all of a sudden the market the span A started aiming to the upside, crossed over and then continued to aim to the upside. So you're safe with that bullish trend long term until you see this pretty much um, crossover or you'll see span A angling to the downside. You're pretty safe to trade to the upside. OK, now one thing you want to always be aware of. When you when you move the cloud out, when you move it out, be aware of thick clouds like this that get really thick and flat and then start to roll over because that lets me know there's a bottom. Now, this one didn't show you really well. That could mean there's a bottom or a top. So when I see this, let me go to a good point where we could see this couple good points. I don't want to see a big thick cloud like this because that and plus that cloud you'll see. Look at that cloud. Now we're going to move back a little bit. Let's move back even farther so you could see the beginning of that. Let's move back farther. Let's move back to the when it reached its top. When this market reached its top, look how far apart these were again, guys. That distance is not good. And then the other big thing is that span B was flat. Even span A was flat. 
but span A was starting to roll over. When I see a big thick cloud, that kind of lets me know I might be at a top or bottom. In this case, a top because we're moving to the upside. So I always like to mark that top level because we may never go past that level. Then I like to compare it to anything in the past and see if it was a, a good level. All right. And then I use that top to say that the market might not go past that level because you got a big thick cloud and that's where it's probably going to find a resistance point. Then you could see the market breaks through a little bit, but all along it's getting thicker, but we're rolling over. Then you could see the market starts to fail. All right. You could see we're too thick to be going long, too wide, too thick. This thickness is volatility. This wide thick cloud is volatility. And you don't want to see the volatility. You want to see a cloud that's angling to the upside. All right. Thicker clouds is, a, are, is just a lot of volatility. You're not getting that movement that you want to the upside. And then it starts to roll over. Trouble. And now we're at our trend line. We're a little bit flat still. Then we break our trend line. We get our crossover. We're angling to the downside. This market is doomed. All right. So when you see a big thick cloud, don't go the direction that you're going. Wait for the market. All right. So like here, you get a big thick cloud on the bottom here. This is what I'm, I'm trying to show you this one. All right. So big thick clouds align me when I see a big thick cloud. Again, I always put that bottom to see if that's a bottom or a top. And let's go to where that level is. Let's go. Let's go right to there. Now, at this point, the cloud already was thick. All right. And we're late here. But anyway, guys, so look, watch, see how thick that's starting to get volatility. We might have hit a bottom here. I like to make it into a zone. So um, we'll make that into a zone. And then we'll see if the market could break that level more than likely. And then I'll look at divergence to see if we have divergence. But that thick cloud were flat spam B. All right. Span A is still aiming to the downside. But then watch, see, it's rolling to the upside now. The cloud got too thick. It's rolling to the upside, probably reached the bottom. Now, I'm not saying the market can't come back to that level, but you probably reached the bottom. And that's going to be a strong support and resistance, a well, strong support level. And then you could see the market keeps going to the upside. Eventually you get your crossover. That's how to let you know, don't take this short trade because the cloud is showing you a lot of volatility and signs that the market structure may be changing. And it could be short term, but you see what's happening here. Are you going to be able to withstand all that? If you take a short down in this area, you want to be able to look at these things. And another thing that also you got this big C clamp, right? Remember we talked about the Tinkinson Kijinson getting too far apart. Here you could see this is another sign. These are all signs not to take that short trade any farther because you could see Tinkin Kijinson is flat. Tinkinson's aiming to the downside. They still get farther apart. I'm not going short at this point. And then you could see now that's what a C clamp looks like. Flat Kijinson and this is aiming to the upside like a clamp. And then the market moves to the upside and you could see. And also this cloud told you the same thing. These are acting the same way as Tinkinson and Kijinson, but longer term. It takes longer for it to happen on this. So this is a little bit shorter. These two together act just like these two together. All right. So that helps you to understand the market. So that's looking at um, your span A and B. And again, see how we're ahead here? I would mark this as a support and resistance level. And you can see it helps you to see levels too. So you could also look at that level and see what the market does. You could see the market tries to get to that point and use that as a resistance level. Then the market breaks through. <laughs> then the market drops, <laughs> whatever happened there. All right. So let's go back to those PowerPoints and then we should come back and look at one more part of the indications, which would be, um, we'll look at Chico span. Chico, 
means delay in Japanese. Chico compares the price from 26 days ago. This comparison can show if the market is either bullish or bearish or ranging. Chico span is known as the confirmation to enter a trade. So here's Chico span alone. This pink fuchsia color line. And here it is in context with the whole system. The Chico span, also known as your lagging span, is said to be the most important but simplest of the five Ichimoku lines. The formula for calculating the lagging span is the closing price shifted 20 day, 26 days into the past. So 26 days, um, so 26 candles backwards from the current candle, but at the same level as the current candle. When the lagging span is above the price candles, this represents dominant buying has occurred. And when the lagging span is below the price candles, this represents dominant selling has occurred. Therefore, it leads to one of the famous buy selling signals in the Ichi Ichimoku equilibrium table, upturn reversal of lagging span. When the lagging span exceeds the price line, the candlesticks, it is called the improvement of the lagging span and a buy signal. When the lagging span falls below the price line, it is called a reversal of the lagging span and a sell signal. The lagging span is also a confirmation span. The lagging span confirms the long or short term, um, the long or short entry based on whether the lagging span is above or below price. So if you were to open a trade and the lagging span was above the candles, then this would confirm your long entry. Conversely, if you would open a trade, but the lagging span was below the candles, then this would signal no trade because the lagging span is still showing selling is dominant. Therefore, you would definitely want to make a, a bearish trade, a sell trade. So here you can see how um, Chico follows horizontally at the same level as price, but 26 periods behind. So here's the candle, 26 days back, 26 candles back is here. From here to here is 26 candles back, but your Chico span is right here and price is right here. All right. That tells me 26 days ago, price was higher and we could see price drop below right here. Once this is Chico span is below price, we're bearish. And if you're trying to sell the market, this is a good sign for you to sell the market. Here we see from point A to point B, Chico span was above the price candles throughout this whole point. This represents a bullish trending market. Then the mark, then Chico span fell below price right here. But all this time it was bullish. You could have been looking to trade to the upside long. So here we see from point A to point B, Chico span was below the price candles. So from point A to point B, Chico span is below these price candles. This represents a bearish trending market. All right. And this means you could be selling the market from this point forward until the mark till Chico span breaks above this level. All right. So let's look at Chico span in context. All right, guys, so here's Chiku Span right here. This is it by its, not by itself, but with the whole system. This is the pink line that nobody pays attention to. All right, but this is your, your confirmation to take your trade, long or short, whatever direction you're going. And it's very simple. It's the same level as price, but shifted back 26 candles, 26 periods. Here's price. Wherever that price level is right there, 26 candles in the past, you'll see Tinkinson, I mean, um, Chico Span right there also. So here's price. Well, 26 candles behind it is your um, Chico Span. Very important. Why? Because 26 candles ago, you were down here. So you go backwards and you can look. 26 candles ago, you were right here. Right there. So what does that tell you happened between... 26 candles, it shows you that the market moved higher, which gives you an indication that the market is trending to the upside. You want to get into a trade long if the market's trending to the upside, but what if it was below this point right here? 
you probably wouldn't want to be going long, all right? So that's like looking at this point. So let's say we're here. Let's go 26 periods would be right here. 26 periods would be here. <clears throat> so from this point to this point, is where your key, your chiku span was 26 days ago, 26 candles ago. If you say 26 candles ago we were here, all right, so we were here 26 candles ago, right there. And now you're here. Why would you think about going long? Because it's showing you the bearish trend to the downside, all right? So what chiku span tells you is this. Let me remove that. It tells you, and I'm going to take it by itself real quick. So here it is by itself. It tells you this. While Chiku Span is below these candles, that's bearish. And if you're going to go short, you're good. While Chiku Span is below these candles, you shouldn't be going to the upside long with a long trade. But then Chiku Span crosses, and now Chiku Span is above these candles. That means it's good to go long at this point. All right, so here's where it changed over for you, and here's where it changed the bearish right here. Now, while Chiku Span is inside this candle range, our, our realm of price here, it tells you that the market is flat and it's ranging. You shouldn't be going um, long or short, or you should at least know the market is in a range here, and you need to find those uh, levels, all right? But then again, you could see once Chiku Span crossed uh, below this candle here, this market became bearish. All right. Once it crossed below this point, it became bearish. Once it crossed above this point, it became bullish. And this is tells you if you're safe to take your trade. All right. So if you're looking at everything in context, let's put it all back on here. So we talked about trading. A couple trade things. Let's go to a spot where you could see what I'm really talking about. So if I'm looking at trading off of this bounce of the Kedenson level here to the downside, I want to make sure Chiku Span is below these price candles. And in this case, it was. If I get into the trade here, 26 candles behind me, Chiku Span would be right here. And that would tell me we're below these candles. We're starting, we're bearish. And I could take that short trade. If it was above the candles, I wouldn't want to take that trade. All right. So that's basically what it's telling you. All right. It's telling you what has happened over the past 26 periods. Did the market move higher or did the market move lower? If the market moved higher, that's a good thing for you. You probably want to catch some of that trend that's starting. All right. But if it's lower, then the market started to move lower for the past 26 periods. If it's near that same area 26 periods later, Price is near that same level where key, where Chico Span was previously. You're probably in a range, so that's how it helps you a lot. But a lot of traders don't even think about it or use it. All right, so that's what you got. And now we can start to focus on expanding our knowledge of this whole system with the theories. All right, so make sure you know this stuff and understand it. All right. <laughs>